Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing as well as analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. Hopefully, you are having an amazing day. We have lots of news to get through in this video, but I really want to start things out with several things pertaining to AMD and their upcoming CPUs as well as GPUs. Now, I want to set the stage a little bit here, so bear with me. We can skip forward a couple of minutes if you're intimately familiar with Zen 2 and AMD's current APU lineups. So, currently, AMD have Renor as their uh, latest APU, and it is a combination of a Zen 2-based processor along with a tweaked, enhanced version of the Vega architecture. And if you've been following along with laptop reviews, you'll know that it's extremely well received. The battery life is pretty damn amazing. It has incredible performance as well. And overall, it has been very popular with reviewers and a lot of uh, end users are also extremely excited what this could mean. But it is using Zen 2, and that will, of course, be succeeded with Zen 3. Zen 3 will also mark the send-off to the AM4 platform. So Ryzen 4000 will be uh, Zen 3 based, and uh, after that, Ryzen 5000, which will be on the AM5 platform, will bring with it numerous enhancements, including, I'm hearing, DDR5, and just overall, of course, it will also be a lot faster with an updated architecture for the CPU as well. But there have been numerous rumours for the successor to Renault, which has been known as Cezanne. And so that brings us to today, and a leak which has actually come from AMD themselves. Now, full disclosure, I do have more information than what I'm going to share with you guys, because basically what happened is that an employee at AMD accidentally made some email chains public. And so I will talk about some stuff, but there are some things, including the emails themselves, I'm not going to share with you, because one, it uh, has a whole bunch of people's email addresses and full names in there, and I'm not comfortable sharing that in public forum, for obvious reasons, not only because of YouTube privacy reasons, but just in general, I, I don't want to blast people's names out there. And the other reason as well is that some stuff has like pinouts and it just kind of goes over what I'm comfortable sharing, to be honest. But I want to focus on the cool stuff with you. Uh, and that includes the performance, the uh, IGPU details and that type of thing. I'm much more happy to discuss that rather than, you know, kind of like email chains and I, I'm just not comfortable kind of going in that direction. So hopefully you understand. Uh, if So I'm just saying that because I'm probably going to get some questions uh, in the comments if I don't. So um, anyway, so when it comes to Cezanne, it is, as I mentioned a moment ago, the next generation of APU from the company. And it will be FP6, which means it is pin compatible with Renault, which is great. But what I'm really interested in, well, there's a couple of things. One it, uh, in the email chain, it specifically states that the Zen 3 cores have a significant uh, uplift over Zen 2. The exact line was it's a significant CPU performance uplift over Renault, but of course that is because uh, Renault uses Zen 2. So this seems to mean that uh, my information that Zen uh, two to three was a quite a significant leap. I'd been told that we could be looking at low tens uh, in terms of percentage minimum, but realistically, it could be 15 to 17 percent on average. Of course, the problem saying average is it's very difficult to uh, quantify what an average workload is. If you're someone who does like video encoding every single day, then your workload is going to be different to someone who does like gaming and so on and so on. But there are several reasons that we can believe this, not least of which is that we saw that the actual CCX of Zen 3 is now uh, just a single one. Whereas with Zen 2, there were two CCXs, each with four cores, with its own kind of slice of level 3 cache. Now they are unified, which theoretically, anyway, will mean that we will have uh, less intercore latency. And overall, I'm also hearing that the Infinity Fabric as well does have some improvements. So I do believe that uh, we're going to be looking at a very nice send-off for AM4. Keeping on the subject of Cezanne, though, uh, according to a image that uh, was actually included in the emails, and this is the only image I'm going to show, 
which was included in the email. Uh, this is an assessment of AMD Type-C design to get the best DP display port performance of uh, VR. And on the right hand side you can see AMD FP6 APU, uh, which is obviously marked as Cezanne. And then we can see that this is directly connected to an AMD GPU Narve 2X. What this essentially means is that while we don't have information on the iGPU architecture, so it could be Narve based, it could still be Vega based, what we can know for certainty is that AMD here are essentially confirming they have plans to offer an ecosystem which will allow uh, laptop manufacturers like the Dells of the world to be able to, yes, buy a uh, APU from them, but they will also offer high-end GPU solutions. These, of course, will be uh, discrete uh, GPUs, which will be an entirely separate die to the APU. And then that, of course, will kick in with heavy workloads. So, for example, if you boot up a game, that will take over and will, of course, save the battery life and day-to-day -day Windows tasks. Well, by golly gosh, that will be handled by the graphics of Cezanne. Now, I want you to put a pin on that information for just a moment because, well, there's more. And this comes courtesy of Rogame, who's been doing some digging. And he's been looking for PCIDs, and he's actually found several new PCIDs, including some which are actually in reference to Cezanne, uh, well, at least most likely. But in a separate tweet, he also found more Narve 21 PCIDs. But the really interesting thing here is that it seems like Narve 21 internally, in some instances, is being referenced as Narve 10. Now, there are multiple different theories as to the reason that uh, AMD are doing this, but the most logical one is they're trying to obfuscate uh, people trying to dig and find information regarding the new GPUs, because obviously if they're being misidentified, it's very difficult to, well, find information of them, right? That makes a lot of sense. So what we have here is confirmation that now there are at least 10 different revisions of Narve 21. And we also know that there are consumer and professional grade, uh, grade GPUs. Now, I'm hearing that Narve 2X has much better compute performance than the first generation, and this does seem to be backed up by what we're seeing on the next generation consoles, of course. So one thing I'm hearing is that AMD will offer uh, prosumer slash consumer grade GPU. So that will mean that, of course, we have the gaming focused ones, but also potentially GPUs which will be more focused for like CAD work, 3D rendering, that type of thing. And this was actually something I heard back in March of last year. You may recall one of my earliest RDNA 2 videos, although back then we only knew it, of course, as Narve, was that yes, it would have hardware based ray tracing, but AMD A wanted to release two product lines. One would be uh, the compute based ones designed for uh, servers, which we now know as CDNA, and of course the gaming lineup. But I also heard that for Narve, they also wanted to kind of have have two lines one would be professional grade and one would once again be aimed at gamers unfortunately the exact specs are not known and this circles back to what i was mentioning just a moment ago with Cezanne because it seems like Cezanne uh, does have uh, the ability to connect directly up to a Narve 2X GPU and the references seem to be for Narve 23 and that was the GPU that I got told was the NVIDIA killer. But there's been a lot of uh, confusion with my sources of whether Narve 23 or Narve 21 or 22 is the bigger of the GPUs. One person who originally told me it was Narve 23 are adamant that 23 is the highest end SKU, whereas someone else is pretty adamant that it's Narve 21, so I'm not sure which. However... NVIDIA Killer does not necessarily mean that it's the best in terms of raw performance. It could be the best in terms of price-to-performance ratio. And if you think of it this way, yes, I am a massive desktop fan. It's where I do pretty much all of my gaming other than the odd console exclusive. But in general, I love desktop hardware. But it's hard to uh, ignore the fact that the laptop market has been expanding significantly. 
And you can see yourself now what's happening with the NVIDIA super cards on uh, laptops. They are insanely fast. And, you know, a temp generation Intel or a Renault-based uh, CPU, and then you throw that in with uh, an NVIDIA Super uh, GPU, and you have so much uh, performance that unless you're running something like a 9900K and an RTX 2080 Ti, you're probably not going to be able to do that much better comparatively on a desktop unless you start overclocking. And it's really impressive, to be honest, how far we have come on mobile technology. And for people who don't have a ton of space or maybe just need the portability of a laptop, well, you can start to see the appeal. So it is interesting to me that we are seeing all of these references. And if there's one, there's always another. Because NVIDIA have just made an announcement which is basically setting the internet ablaze they have announced that the gtc 2020 keynote will take place on the 14th of may or may 14th whatever way you want to uh, discuss it and the interesting thing is the tagline is get amped for the latest platform breakthroughs in ai deep learning autonomous vehicles robotics and professional graphics this, of course, is almost certainly in reference to Ampere. I believe it would be unlikely that NVIDIA would use the term amped, so, and they did so, by the way, on not only social media, but also the official press release on the website, so it seems to me like they are really pushing that, and obviously everyone knows what Ampere is, so whether the final architecture is Ampere, it seems kind of a subtle way for NVIDIA to let us know that, by golly gosh, we're ready to announce our next generation architecture. Now, from what they're stating here, I'm extremely skeptical to be abundantly clear that we are going to see RTX 30 debut on stage. I'm hearing that it's going to be more Q3, possibly even Q4. It seems almost like NVIDIA and AMD kind of been playing a game of chicken. Although, to my understanding, RDNA 2 had originally been intended for summer, but uh, because of the uh, current world conditions, it had obviously gotten delayed. Whether that's true or not, I honestly don't know. But uh, the long and short of it is it looks like NVIDIA are going for later this year. And it looks like they're also bifurcating their lineup, at least according to what I'm hearing. There's one set of cards which are going to be, of course, for the data center, which, of course, will be very interesting just to see what they're capable of achieving. But there's also a series which will be designed purely for gaming, which we will call RTX 30. They could be RTX 21, but I think we can all agree that that is a terrible name and NVIDIA should never ever do it. So, if it's RTX 30, um, there have been an awful lot of rumours that we have covered in the past for that, but too long, didn't read, NVIDIA seemed to be really doubling down from all of the rumours on ray tracing performance for the next generation, and I'm hearing it's quite a significant leap forward over even Turing. I think this makes sense, given that uh, ray tracing for NVIDIA is obviously incredibly important, and I'm also hearing that uh, DLSS is also going to be a significant focus as well, uh, and overall the tensor cores of uh, the next generation RTX 30 is also going to see a significant leap, as, uh, to, not to mention. And DLSS's performance will be because of a significant leap forward in the tensor cores of the GPU. And Kitty Corgi on Twitter, although now is Kitty Kitties, you can't make these usernames up, or well, I suppose you could, but anyway, according to them, uh, the RTX 3080 Ti is going to have around a 40% improvement in performance over what you can find in the RTX 2080 Ti, and the GA104 Silicon um, is going to have uh, about the same level of performance. So, from what we can understand here anyway, the uh, next generation cards is going to have 5,376 CUDA cores. Now, honestly, I do not know if this individual's information is accurate, but one thing they have stated is that every single card in the 30 lineup will have RTX technology. And that's actually what I got whispered a few times by people, but I don't know if it's true, honestly, so I would take that with a hefty grain of salt. Then again, from NVIDIA's standpoint, it makes a lot of sense. Because 
I, I think it's very hard to push um, RTX technology if not all of your cards support it. And it's kind of ironic to me because, yes, the RTX 2060, for example, um, you know, is a really cool card. But uh, really and truly, to run ray tracing on a game like Control, you really and truly do need to enable DLSS, ideally. But if you kind of go down further from the product stack and you look at something like a 1660, it's not a high-end card by any stretch of the imagination, but if it did have DLSS technology, it would be really awesome because you could run the game internally at, let's say, 720p, and then it could upscale that to 1080p. And I do understand that uh, DLSS really got hit hard in the media when it first launched, and there are numerous reasons for that. The image quality was really soft. There were a lot of sub-pixel artifacts, particularly in hair. Uh, I'm actually finishing my analysis of that by the way so that should be up this weekend with any luck of uh, the story of DLSS so far so if you're interested in that I encourage you to check it out it's going to be a pretty long video but I'm extremely happy with how it's coming along but basically the early implementations of DLSS kind of weren't ideal but the latter ones like we see with Control which feature DLSS 2 as well as Wolfenstein they are really good um and you can do insane things, like you can upsample from like 540p to 1080p, which is a four, time incre uh, four times increase in pixel count, and it still looks really good. There are some issues here and there, but overall it looks pretty damn amazing. So for them to implement that on the lower end cards, to me, just makes sense, because it means that they could sell cheaper cards, but those users would still get a really decent amount of performance. And the other fact as well is that DLSS 2 is a lot easier to implement for developers. Basically, the neural network that uh, is used to train um, the AI so it can upsample the, uh, upsample the game, it's a lot more generic. So you no longer have to worry so much about creating specific code per game, basically, because it's a lot more generic, it's a lot faster to actually implement this and a lot easier as well. And basically what they do is that they take a native resolution image of the game and then they compare it with uh, attempts from the AI of upsampling it. And obviously, at the beginning, the AI is going to do a really poor job. It's going to suck, quite simply. But then it's going to get better and better and better as it's training the AI on their supercomputers. And then they can run that trained data on the tentacles of the GPU. And I think it's doing a really good job. And I think um, that uh, upsampling using AI is going to be of critical importance as we go forward, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's part of RDNA 2 anyway. With all of that said, though, hopefully... Oh, uh, just to clarify, that would be um, running, however, on non-DLSS. They would run it on the compute cores, most likely at a lower uh, precision floating point operation. But anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you did, then the normal stuff, like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.